today I'm going to teach you how to just do a, a basic drawing of a fox and um, then I'm going to transfer it to watercolour paper and then um, show you what it will look like as a watercolour. So, to draw the fox to start with, we're going to draw a central line just down the middle. And my um, table is a little bit bumpy with all the stuff on it. Then we're going to do a semicircle. And I'm just using an ordinary HB pencil, nothing special. Okay, this is the top of his head, and I'm going to put his nose so far down. Now, the rubber is your best um, friend, and each time, um, don't be afraid to actually use the rubber to rub out if you feel that it's not quite the way you want it to be. Okay. Don't ever be afraid to rub out. There's nothing wrong with rubbing out. Um, so, that's it. And I'm going to show you how to draw lines to make things kind of symmetrical, okay? Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to think about doing his snout. And... I'm just doing... these bits here okay to help him with his snout okay and now I'm going to put his ears one ear in okay so we have one ear and it's just a basic triangle shape when you start to think about drawing just think about the shapes, okay? And he's because he's a fox, he's quite symmetrical. Okay, now to make the other ear balance because he's looking directly at us, I'm just going to do a moon along here. That's like a crescent. And then I know that his ear goes, other ear goes there. Okay, so they line up nicely okay so it looks like they are symmetrical again I can just have a look make it a little bit higher all the time changing the lines and once you're happy that you've got a right balance which I am at the moment then I rub back the line I always keep the center line I don't get rid of the center line now I'm going to draw a line up from his nose, up, and from there, up, okay, and I'm going to change my centre line just to make it a little bit more central to those lines. Again, always readjusting, okay, and from there I'm going to put a triangle down here for his nose and in his bridge of his nose is round and just two little semicircles for his nostrils. Okay. Now to make his eyes I am just going to do another circle to here, one there, and again another line to keep it ending in the same place, and up to that ear there. And then from there I'm going to just use another semicircle to join up his eyes. Okay. Now from here, 
I can start to put in his snout. I'm just going to put some little just the little round bits there and then his his mouth and you can see now he's starting to take shape and I can just rub these lines out now because I don't need them and there and he's very much taking shape still keeping the centre line you still need the central line okay now I'm going to just stylize the sides of his head. And then on this side. Yeah, like that. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just make these a little bit smaller. Because now I know where his eyes, sorry, <laughs> now I know where his eyes are going to go. Just check if you can see. in there like this. Okay, so now I've got that I can just rub out these guidelines. Um, this is the first time that I've actually started to film in my studio and so I'm getting used to the setup so please bear with me. So those are the outside patches of his eyes. And then I'm going to put his eyes in. Always remember that when you're doing eyes, every step of the way you do the same on each side. And this eye is a little bit lower. Don't do a complete eye and then do the other eye because they just won't marry up very well. It's the muscle memory in your um, hand. It remembers doing this shape that I'm doing now. It's used to doing that shape. The same as when I start to do the eye itself. I've just done that. The hand remembers it. And now I'm going to put the pupil in. Don't forget the highlight. Hello, Mr. Fox. Now, there is a legend that um, some cultures, when they actually paint, they like to put the eye in afterwards because they feel that then you are in control of the picture. Where other, like me, I like to put the eyes in because it gives a character and to me, it starts to form a, me and the painting start to form a relationship. Now, I am now going to just put a line under his muzzle. Because I want to put in his, the rough of his neck. And that basically, if under his nose... And predominantly and most of it is under his nose and it helps me to just proportion him a lot better so you can do this this rough any way you want there's no hard and fast rule and the same on the other side. Now, the one thing I did forget to tell you is, <laughs> sorry, you need to draw a line down here from his ears. Sorry about that. And I will give you the reason why. Is his rough is going to be basically the same width of his head. And that's why the lines are here. So do 
<laughs> rewind and put your rough in. And the more texture you can give it, the better he looks. Okay, remember always looking at anything that needs adjusting, anything that you feel, feel needs adjusting. Now I'm just going to start to put texture in his ears because he's not a solid bold line. And I'm going to shape the ears as well just to make it more realistic. And I'm going to do the inside of the ear. Okay, and I'm going to do this one, and I'm not going to make this one so textured, just to give it a little bit of variation. It's a bit rackety, this one. It's been in a few fights. It's been getting the chickens out of our garden. <laughs> now, because we have the centre line, we know where the centre of his head is, and I'm just going to give his head a little bit of texture as well going down to his rough. And also his white patches I'm going to give some texture to. Because he's quite furry in his head. He's not, he's an animal and he's covered in fur and it doesn't always lay right. Okay, and with this one. Now what I am going to do is, I'm just going to rub out these lines here because I don't need them anymore. still need the central line. And I'm going to just show you, using the central line, the difference he looks like when he's got texture to when he hasn't got texture on his face and what a difference texture can make. So because he's a fox, he has a white muzzle. And I'm just going to just lightly put this in. Just lightly. It's not a block it merges in together from the brown and then from here I start to put a little bit of texture in his face around his eye down the center of his muzzle okay can make his muzzle a little bit fatter which I think would be a bit better because now I've got some texture in there, I can see that the muzzle would be better. Let's filter them. Okay, so you can see by looking at the two sides, this now starts to have a lot more character in it, where this side is still very stylized. So I'm just going to now, I'm just going to put the texture into this side, so this side comes alive as well. And you're given the impression that he is furry. He's not got skin. He's furry. And down the centre of his muzzle too. Okay. Now, we've got this amazing... We can take this piece off now. Okay. Mm. But I'm just going to leave a mark there because that's really, really important. Now, I'm going to carry on doing his bib, which is the white bit of the fox. I'm going to carry on drawing that in. And I'm just going to do another bit like this. And I'm going to bring it down into the centre line. Still adding texture down to the centre of the line so I know where his ruff goes down to his legs and on this side using this line and the centre line now from here I am just going to draw a line going at an angle here and this will start to give me the front leg and I'm going to use in the middle from the ruff I'm just going to go and do another line there and that gives me his front leg. 
and by doing that now I can rub this line out. Okay. And now I'm just going to give him some more hair down here on his leg just to give him a bit more texture and then down and now I can rub this bit out. Now he has a white bit on his legs here so that's a full white bit and now I'm just going to carry on because his body's still quite fluffy carrying on giving him some more texture down his leg just a little bit. Now, before I rub this central line out, I'm just going to add a bit more texture. Now, that's the central line. I'm now going to draw a line that goes from the center line to here. And this is his other leg. And if I use my two fingers there and there, that gives me the width of his leg. And I can start to, that's the line there, I can start to do it at an angle, go up until it meets. And that gives me his two legs. And I'm going to rub these two lines out now. I don't need them, I still need this line, this line is important. But what I can do now is, from the central line, I'm going to rub the central line out through the wolf now, a uh, fox now, sorry, wolf. Delusions of grandeur. I'm going to rub these bits out now. Okay. And I'm just going to now bring a little bit more hair through here just to give him some more texture going down his leg. And on this side, I'm going to give him some texture still going down his middle. A little bit of texture there and there, here. And you can do this any way that you want. They're random. You're not going to be able to copy mine from beginning to end because well, I suppose you could do if you were really dedicated, but uh, there's no need to. Now, this bit's important because he is actually sat at slight an angle although his face is facing us his body's at a bit of an angle and he does have his legs do have a shoulder blade and so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use that line just to come out a little bit if you're dead worried you could always draw a line from his rough down if you want to as a guide so you know that it comes out and lands on there. And then we then now I'm going to put his body in, which is just going out and down. And that's his body. And that's his leg going up to his shoulder. Okay. So I'm going to rub this line out just there. And again, I don't need this line anymore. So what I'm going to do now is, oh, I'm going to take this line away, is just going to start to give him some texture and hair on his shoulder because it wouldn't actually be and in here too and down into his leg I'm going to give him a little bit and I'm also going to put in the area that would be white and a little bit of texture in his body, not too much texture in his body because he's quite flat, his coat's quite flat and then a little bit of texture here and a bit more in here and you can carry on building up the texture as much or as less as you want. I'm just going to put his nose in his whiskers and 
and there he is, Mr Fox. You can actually, even if you wanted to, use your finger just like this and like that. And then with a putty rubbing, I'll bet I'm just going to get mine. With a putty rubber, you can just rub out the highlights again. And there. And he starts to come alive again. Now it's going to make his nostrils real dark. Okay, so that's the fox. Okay, and I hope you've got all that all okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer him now onto watercolour paper and show you how I applied watercolour. Okay, so see you in part two. Bye-bye from me and the fox. Bye-bye. So we have our tracing and now... We've popped the basic tracing onto the paper, ready to do our watercolours. Okay, 